Ciao a tutti, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi vi parlo uh, di una struttura uh, che, che usa il verbo stare più il gerundio. So today we're going to talk about a, um, a nice little structure in Italian which allows you to talk about or create a progressive tense. So we're going to be talking about the present tense of stare, the verb stare, which you can see is conjugated over here on my little flip chart, uh, plus the Italian gerund. Okay, so um, what is the gerund? Um, we're going to look at one of its uses today, okay, so there's, there are quite a few ways that you can use the gerund form. The main thing is that you know what it looks like and how to form it, and a couple of irregular ones, and how it can be used with present tense conjugations of this useful verb and what it means when you use this structure. Okay, so that's quite a lot of stuff to take in. So, um, for more information, uh, you can look for stare plus the gerund, or if you're searching in Italian, which is a good idea, look for um, stare più il gerundio. Okay, così, gerundio. Excellent. So, of course, if you're members of my Italian club, you'll be receiving my handout, and that is chock full of uh, practice exercises as well as a link to this video and um, to further further reading and exercises for your uh, linguistic enjoyment. Okay everyone, so um, let's go over how you conjugate stare in the present tense and how it's pronounced, okay? So here we have the verb sto, io sto, so that's the I form. Sto, tu stai. Remember, I mean, you probably know, but you don't need to use the subject pronoun in Italian. You can just conjugate the verb in the correct conjugation, um, and that will suffice. And you can always use subject pronouns emphatically to um, emphasize the person, like, no, you do it. I'm doing this as opposed to you or as opposed to them, okay? So you don't need these subject pronouns when you're talking um, as you do in, say, English or French, but I'm going to put them in anyway. Sto, stai, lui o lei, or the formal lei, sta, noi, stiamo, voi, State and loro, which is they or them, it's they as a subject pronoun, stano. Okay, so let's go through them again. Sto, stai, sta, stiamo, state, stano. Right, I'm going to say a few of them and then you're going to think which line I'm saying, okay, and then afterwards I'll point. Stiamo. Stiamo. Noi. We are, if you like. Sta. Stai. Stai. Ecco. Stano. Excellent. Sto. Sto. Sto, stai, sta, stiamo, state, stano. Now the reason I do that is really to, um, I mean, if that's super easy for you, then great. Um, you're probably an intermediate learner. If you're still at the point where you, uh, you know, don't instantly know what the conjugation or which conjugation goes with which subject pronoun, then you're probably a little bit earlier in your language career. So that's just something to um, get your mind thinking, really. So this verb stare, when you follow it with a gerund form, translates as I am, for example, eating, I am reading, sto uh, mangiando, che cosa stai facendo, what are you doing, like at the moment, right now, as we're talking, sto scrivendo, no, sto, sto parlando, let's start off with a nice A-R-E verb, sto parlando, Tu stai ascoltando. Uh, 
Let's see the examples I've got. Uh, ah, lui lei, or lei formal, sta leggendo. Leggendo. Um, noi stiamo parlando. Okay, let's use the same ones again, just for the sake of ease. Stiamo parlando. Voi state ascoltando. Spero di sì. Ascoltando. E loro, i studenti, uh, stanno leggendo. Ok. Ok. Abbiamo parlare, ascoltare, leggere, parlare, ascoltare, leggere. Ok. So here we've got three verbs. Actually, we need an IRE verb. Uh, aspetta un attimo. Uh, let's change the, uh, ascoltare for um, partire. Partire, sì. Partire. Partendo. Oh, ma stai partendo. And where's the other one? So, ascoltare, we'll get rid of ascoltando. And we're going to change it to partendo. Partendo. State partendo. Ma perché state partendo? Right, so, why did I scrub them out? So, there was nothing wrong with ascoltando in either of those uh, examples. But I was looking for an IRE verb, okay? I've written them down on my hand there, guys. We've got partire. We've got uh, leggere and we've got parlare. So the purpose of that is to show you an ARE verb, an IRE verb and an ERE verb and how they change. So, hence scribbling that out. Um, so let's have a look. Sto, sto parlando. I'm talking. I'm in the middle of talking. Right this moment I am talking. That's what I'm doing at the moment. Okay. Stai partendo. That means you're in the process of leaving. You're literally going now as I talk. Sta leggendo. Uh, io sto parlando mentre lui sta leggendo un libro, per esempio. So I am talking whilst he is reading a book or something. In the process of. Currently doing something. So that's when you use this stare structure plus an of a gerund form. And these are how the gerund forms are produced. Ando for an ARE verb. Endo for an IRE verb. And endo again for an ERE verb. So really you just have to remember to chop the ARE, ERE or IRE ending. Just chop the ending off the verb and add ando or endo to the verb stem. So um, let's think of a few verbs, ARE verbs. So here's a few. Ascoltare, guardare, these are just the simple most common ones. Um, uh, that should be enough for now. So um, sto, we're going to make these the gerund forms. So sto ascoltando. 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 Guardare, I know that that means to look at or to watch. I want to say I am currently watching something right now. Adesso sto guardando un film. Uh, um, noi stiamo andando al cinema. I don't know. We're going to the cinema. We're literally in the process of going right now. Uh, now. Sto andando, stiamo andando. So, ARE verbs, chop off the ending, add ando to it. So, let's have a look. Uh, partire, so partendo. So, let's think of some other ones. Uh, pulire, to clean. Dormire. It's kind of a weird one because you probably wouldn't say that you're sleeping in the middle of sleeping because you'd be asleep. But, uh, why not? Dormire. Ah, finire. Okay, so they're probably three pretty common ones here. We're going to make them the gerund form by chopping off the IRE. I'm just going to rub them out. 
pulendo, an ad endo, okay? Dormire becomes dormendo. Awesome. And finire becomes finendo. So that is your gerund form of three regular, or three, three common, I should say, um, verbs in Italian that end with ire. Okay, and the other one I had to change on the board was partire, and we're changing it to partendo. So the weird thing about e, ire verbs is that you would think it might, the gerund might be um, partindo or finindo. Ma no, non è il caso. So that's not actually uh, what happens uh, for some reason. Um, the IRE verbs have this endo ending. So now what we're going to do is look at some, you think of some ERE verbs. We've got leggere, which means to read. Um, mettere. Well, there's loads of Italian verbs that have mettere. That one means to like to put something somewhere. Um, Prendere, sì, perché no? Prendere, and um, so that's to, to take. Let me see if I can find another one. Let's see if I can find another one that's interesting. Ooh! This is interesting. Uh, fingere. Okay, so I do like that one, but I can't think of an example without having something to follow it. So fingere means to pretend or to feign, as in to feign interest or to to fake something, fake an injury, pretend to be sick, pretend to be ill, <laughs> kind of thing, pretend to be amused. Uh, sto mettendo la pena qui. I'm putting the pen here. I am in the middle of doing that. I'm currently doing that right now. So, mettere becomes mettendo. Ah, prendere um, diventa prendendo. Sto prendendo qualcosa. Sto prendendo il treno, per esempio. So, when you take the train, you use prendere, just like we do in English, to take something, even though you're not physically taking it, you're getting on it, which is a bit strange, but prendendo. And then we have fingere, which is not a common verb, but it's just one that I looked at in my verb book here. Um, what would happen here? We've got this G and the, well, as you add the suffix endo, it doesn't really change the sound of the, the verb stem. Fingendo. <laughs> Sto fingendo. <laughs> I'm just feigning, I'm just faking it. I'm, uh, you'd have to, or oh, I'm pretending stuff in gender. So, three examples there of verbs that end with ere that have the end or ending in the gerund form. So, ere verbs go to uh, and or. Let's have a look. Um, I'll write it in blue. Ari verbs go to ando, so I'll just go for the most common. Parlare becomes parlando. Parlando. Dormire o partire o finire o pulire, any regular Ari verb doesn't have indo at the end in the German form, but endo. Sto dormendo. Oh, I'm sleeping. Lasciami in pace. Leave me alone. Okay, then ERE verbs like leggere or mettere or prendere or scendere even um, go to endo. Leggendo. Okay. And in front of these gerund forms, we use the conjugated present tense form of stare. So, um, let's see what that looks like. Sto parlando. Silenzio. Sto parlando. And if you want to make, like, emphatically say, I'm speaking now, like, you guys stop speaking because I'm speaking now, then you can add io. Silenzio! Sto parlando io. Okay, but I would suggest not doing that because it's kind of rude. Um, 
sto dormendo, oh ma lasciami in pace, sto dormendo, leave me alone, I'm, I'm sleeping, ok? Um, mm, che, cosa, che cosa stai facendo adesso? What are you doing now, in this moment? Um, sto leggendo il documento di Charlotte del Club Italiano di febbraio, per esempio, sto Scrivendo, ah, scrivere was a really good ERE verb example that I could have used. So, um, so let's just uh, let's write it on here. Sto scrivendo delle risposte. I am writing. So that's from the verb scrivere. Um, uh, I'm going to write a few down here, see if you can tell me what they mean. Mm -hmm. La 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 la. La 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 la. Sto cantando. <laughs> I'm singing. Um, I've got one. Sto riflettendo. Sto riflettendo. Riflettere. Così. Riflettendo. Sometimes when I write uh, a verb noun, I, I think to myself, has it got... Um, you know, two D's or two F's or two T's. And in this instance, riflettere, I had to think, has it got two T's? And ci sono due T. Ce ne sono due. So there are. So that's the kind of thing that's really useful when you've got a verb book like this. You know the verb, but you just maybe you haven't written it down recently. So anyway, the verb is riflettere. It's funny because there's a reflection on the, uh, on the whiteboard, but riflettere. Tendo is I am reflecting, I'm thinking about something, okay, I'm, cons I'm considering something. Okay, um, so let's think of some uh, examples here. I'll pick a few from my uh, little handout. Use that bit of a whiteboard there, try and get away from the reflections. Very difficult to do that, you know, very difficult not to have reflections in these videos. But, um, sto provando. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing what I can, I'll try. Um, okay, so let me see. Mm. If I wanted to change a verb, a sentence from, say, just the normal present tense, here's an example which is on my hand. Uh, lavo, scusa, lavo i piatti. Lavo i piatti. I am washing the plates, I'm doing the dishes, okay? Lavo i piatti. Uh, and I want to change it into the uh, stare plus the gerund form. I'm trying to get away from these <laughs> these reflections. I'd have to take this verb lava, lavare, which means to wash. Attenzione, perché lavorare non vuol dire to wash. Lavorare vuol dire to work. Okay, that's something often you know students get mixed up. Lavare with three syllables. Lavare is to wash or to clean. Think of la oh, lava, that doesn't help. Lava, when you lather up, probably doesn't help you. But lavorare così, lavorare with four syllables, that means to work. So you probably want to say lavo i piatti. Lavo i piatti. If we take that verb, Lavare, and we put it in its uh, gerund form. La, well, what is its gerund form? A che cos'è? Come si mette alla forma gerundio? Quel, quel verbo. Lavando, sì. So you just take the ARE verb, take off the ending, add the, the, the suffix ando, and then you have the gerund. Um, and then we use the verb stare, in the present tense as a um, auxiliary verb. So sto lavando means I am currently washing something, okay? So sto lavando i piatti. So, piatti. So earlier on I think I used a couple of examples in the to form. Che cosa stai facendo? Che cosa stai facendo? So what do you what are you doing? What are you doing at the moment? So, oh, here it is. 
Che cosa stai facendo? Che cosa stai facendo? So there we have the verb fare, which is unsurprisingly uh, irregular, even in its gerund form. So fare is the verb to do or to make, depending on how it translates into English, because it's the same verb in Italian. Uh, but the gerund is actually sort of based on the um, old Latin root of the verb, the old Latin stem. Um, so instead of being fare it, or fando, as you might expect, it's facendo. And that's also uh, linked to why when we conjugate that verb, we, we don't say <laughs> fa, <laughs> for I do or I make, we use faccio. Okay, so we put the, the, the O ending for the present tense EO form of the verb after fac, which is the, the stem. Okay, so facendo is a, a common irregular gerund. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't follow this and or endo form. Let's think of another one. So I think on my handout I've also mentioned the irregular gerund for the verb bere. Okay, so the verb bere means to drink. Um, bere, to drink, B-E-R-E, -E, another short little verb there. Bevo, remember, io bevo, that means I drink or I'm drinking in the present tense. It changes the stem of the verb to B-E-V, okay, which I guess was bevere or bevere, facere, facere, I'm not quite sure, I never studied uh, Latin as such, but I am aware that this uh, is conjugated from its Latin, it's old Latin stem. So, bevendo, that's the gerund form. Che cosa stai facendo? Io sto bevendo un caffè. Sto bevendo dell'acqua. Sto bevendo una birra. Sto bevendo... Non sto bevendo niente. <laughs> I'm not drinking anything. So you have this option, basically, if you want to Im Im impart or get across to someone that you're currently in the process of doing something as you speak, that's when you have the option of using either the present tense of a verb, like this, like just the normal present tense. You don't need the subject pronoun, io, unless you want to emphasize the fact that it's you doing something normally as opposed to someone else. Um, and if you want to, um, say that you're currently in the process of doing something now to avoid confusion, you can use stare in the present tense plus this gerund. Now there's another one which is a bit irregular. Um, mm, mm, ah, okay, yeah, dire. Okay, so they're three very common verbs because we say, do, make and drink very often. That's why they're so common. And they're also, like, uh, fare is also used in um, and, you know, like other structures, other verb structures, you know, things that you've done. So that's why they're, they're common and worth mentioning. So dire, um, to, to say or to tell. Um, let's say to say or to tell. Um, so instead of it going to endo and just being dendo, studendo, no. That's a little bit strange too. So it takes again, I think it's the Latin stem, D I C, and then you add the E N D O to that. Dicendo. That's nice, isn't it? The C and the E sound as a C. Sto dicendo qualcosa. Uh, silenzio. <laughs> um, sto parlando. Sto dicendo qualcosa. I am saying something. So fare goes to facendo. Bere goes to bevendo, and dire goes to dicendo. Otherwise, ARE verbs go to ando, mangiando, um, suonando, like chitarra, parlando, uh, cantando. Um, scrivere, which is an ERE verb, goes to endo, scrivendo, um, leggendo, mettendo. Um, Fingendo, remember to pretend or to feign. Uh, what's the other one? So, IRE verbs are the ones that are not as you might expect. Um, instead of saying finindo or dormindo or pulindo, it also shares the endo suffix, okay? So, um, 
let's finish with a couple of tests. So if I want to say, I am leaving, I'm leaving, right now I'm leaving. Come si direbbe? How would you say that? I'm leaving. Okay, so you need the verb to leave. Right? This is how you go through the process. You're in Italy, you have to say something, you want to use the gerund form. Okay, partire is to leave. I'm leaving. Stop. It's an IRE verb, so it goes to endo. Sto partendo. Così. What about you guys are leaving? Ah, oh, you're leaving. For example. So, if it's the you guys, it's in the plural form, voi. St oh, scusa, scusa, non è stiate, no. That's a different thing. <laughs> stiate does exist, but it's the present, um, present subjunctive. State, like on my board. Starte partendo. Ma che peccato, state partendo. Okay. And what about, they are watching. They are watching. Okay, so you can look at the board. They are, stano, watching from the verb guardare. Guardare becomes guardando. So you put stano and guardando together. Stano guardando. They are watching. Guardando. Okay, and then remember that question? So you can use this form of questions if you're asking someone currently what they're doing at present. So, <clears throat> what are you doing? Let's put it in the... I know, that's a bit difficult. Because you have to think of the verb to do in its gerund form. Okay, we'll put it in the... We're asking... The to form, we're asking like someone that you know using the to informal form. So, what? How do we start a what question? We can either start with che or che cosa. Let's put both in. Che or che cosa. Stai. In fact, you've got the whole question here. Stai is the to form of stare. And then we need the verb the irregular ger gerund form of fare, which is facendo. Ma che cosa stai facendo? Eccolo. Io, per esempio, sto finendo la lezione. Lo so, è peccato. Io sto... Um, ah, sto per finire. Sto finendo. So, in my last video, I did... Um, uh, a tutorial on how to use the verb stare plus the preposition per, okay? Stare per plus an infinitive. Sto per finire. I'm about to leave, okay? Something is imminently going to happen. But this structure is talking about something that you're currently doing, okay? So, um, io sto finendo la lezione, okay? Thanks, guys. Um, I hope you find that useful. Sorry about the confusion on the board. Um, I'll try and sort out the reflections, but hopefully uh, you've understood. And um, if you're one of the members of my club, then you can look out for my email, which you'll uh, get shortly. And you can also follow the links, which will take you to some on the further online learning. And of course, if you've got any of the que any questions about the content, stare plus gerund form, um, please feel free to get in touch or to leave me a comment. And I will say. This video obviously has not covered everything. There are lots of ways of using the gerund just on its own, but there are also other ways of using um, stare in the present tense plus a gerund. Um, but it is generally a progressive tense about something you're doing as you're talking. It is worth noting as well, you can also use stare in the imperfect plus gerund. Okay, so maybe I'll do another video about it, but um, there, this is not... Um, telling you all the different uses. It's just conjugating stare in the present tense and knowing how to uh, form uh, ando and endo gerund endings and uh, when you use it. So, grazie mille e adesso sto finendo. Ciao, alla prossima volta.